Well, hello everyone. It's Brother Donnie, Country Homestead Preacher. Welcome to 10 Minutes in the Word. It is Monday, January the 18th, and bless you. I hope you've had a great weekend this week. It is cold and crisp here in Alabama. It's about 38 degrees right now, so we are in the midst of winter time, but we are coming today to our Bible study in Galatians chapter 5, and we have been for some time going through the book of Galatians as the Apostle Paul is leading us in all truth, and it's my hope with our Bible study here that you are growing in the knowledge and wisdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I tell you, folks, if there's ever a time that people's going to have to walk in the Word and live out our faith in Jesus, it is now. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's open up in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Lord, we'd ask you to open the Scripture up so we'll know your will and way. Lord, we thank you for much grace and mercy. And Lord, as we come to you with uh, expectation of blessing, Lord, we believe that you'll lead us and guide us. Uh, we thank you. Thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior. In his name I pray. Amen. So take your Bibles and turn to the book of Galatians chapter 5. And we have been for some time talking about uh, the fruit of the Spirit. For at least this will be the third day talking about the fruit of the Spirit. And just by way of reminder, the Apostle Paul is is referencing the um, uh, the opposite of walking in the flesh. And if you remember uh, in verse 16 and 17, Paul talks about, and, and, and really through 20, Paul talks about the what it looks like to walk in the flesh and that, that immorality, impurity, sensuality, jealousy, etc. comes from the flesh. But then in verse number 22, and you remember I told you one of the most important words there is but in verse 22, which is the contrast word, but instead of, uh, the fruit of the spirits, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, kindness, faithfulness, self-control against such there is no law. So last time together, we talked about joy. The time uh, prior to that, we're talk we talked about love. And, and today we're going to talk about peace. And if you'll recall, beloved, the, um, the fruit of the spirit is a direct result of the root. And that root being the Holy Spirit of God in our life. And as we walk through this life, and I'm going to tell you folks, don't, don't be deceived. Don't let anybody tell you that this is an easy life, that it's all chocolates and roses. I'm going to tell you, this is a hard life. We are in a sinful world. There are uh, influences of evil coming against us from all directions. Uh, we deal with uh, fallen people, and even we deal with saved people who are walking in the flesh. So in order for us to be able to walk out to the fullest extent of how Christ would have us to walk out, we must be walking in the Spirit of God. So the fruit of the Spirit is love, and it's joy, and it's peace. And I want to read you John 14, John 14, just speaking of this peace. And remember now, this is all from the root of the Holy Spirit. And in John 14, Jesus is talking about, and he's trying to give comfort to his disciples because he's about to go uh, back to the Father. And in John 14, uh, in verse, let me read 25, these things I've spoken to you while abiding with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Now, it's very interesting here, folks, as we think about the fruit of the Spirit, God has, and I like to think of it this way, God hadn't just kicked us off the truck and said, fend for yourself. Jesus didn't, just, didn't he didn't just leave us when he went back to the Father. No, he sent he said, I uh, am going to send the helper. The helper's going to come who the Father will send in my name. And that helper is God's own spirit, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the triune God. The Holy Spirit is going to come and live in our life. And it says, uh, Jesus says in verse 27, peace, I leave you. Uh, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Stop right there. Now, the world, the lost world, the world that doesn't know God, the world that walks in the things of the flesh, they have manufactured 
or self-given peace. In other words, they buy for themselves peace. Now, let me explain to you what peace is. Peace is it's not absence of all hostility. The, the, the core thing of peace is tranquility. It is satisfaction. It is being, uh, uh, being steadfast in the place that you are. But our Lord says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives you, I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. So the peace that we read about in Galatians chapter 5, the product of the, uh, the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, is a peace that is a, a, a calm assurance of knowing that whatever is transpiring in our life, that, that we are okay with Christ, that we are in tranquility, if you will, with Christ. It's knowing that no matter what happens today, whether my situation is bad or good, whether my relationships is bad or good, whether the world is coming against me is bad or good. You see, the difference between the peace that the world portrays is that the peace that the world offers is a peace that will ultimately flee because it's a it's a unsustainable peace whereas the peace that Christ gives us by his holy spirit it's fixed because it's based on his own self and when God gives this peace to us we live our life and we're able to conduct ourselves in this sinful world in that peace and, you know, there, there's so many people, uh, people are, and you see it on different uh, YouTube videos, people says we need to pray for peace. And we need, and it does say in the Bible, pray for the peace of Israel. But I'm going to tell you, the only thing that can bring real peace is the Lord Jesus Christ. All other peace is fabricated. You may have times when nations are not at war. Uh, you may have times when peoples are not at war. But ultimately, the, 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 the world, according to what Paul says, that walks in the flesh, inertly within them, will be opposite of peace ultimately. I hope that makes sense what I'm saying. You see, we have this rock, we have this root, we have this ingrained, ingrained dwelling of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and we read in John 14, uh, and I love how Paul puts it in, in Ephesians chapter two, verse 14. Uh, he says he himself is our peace. And then in Ephesians six, where, where, where Paul's talking about the, the armor of God. And he says, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, um, in Ephesians six fifteen the, the, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You see, we live, we dwell in his peace. And as we walk out our life and as we reflect on these, um, this fruit of the Spirit, uh, again, it's all tied back to the root. So that if you're not walking in these fruits, it don't mean that you're lost. It means that you're not walking in the Spirit currently. So how, how, do, how do we reconcile that in our mind? Well, I talked uh, in a couple of videos back about self-discipline. I talked about being in the Word of God. Uh, we are products of whatever we put into ourselves. So if we fill ourselves with God's goodness, we fill ourselves with God's Word, we fill ourselves with hymns uh, and songs and uh, psalms that would put forth of the glories of Jesus Christ, you're going to be able to walk in the fullness. For instance, I went to Walmart last night, and, and I, I tell you folks, I've, I've got to where I hate going in there. I hate going in there because somebody just ticks me off every time I go in there. Uh, I got some, uh, 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 there's a grown, uh, a grown woman and a man dressed up in pajamas. It's three o'clock in the afternoon, and they cut me off in traffic, and they acting stupid. So, I decided last night I was going to go in Walmart and I put my little earbuds in and I listened to the to some hymns of the faith and and I lowered my head and I got what I needed to get and uh, because I tried to zero in on the peace, the goodness, the love, and the joy of Jesus Christ, and that's how I'm not saying we avoid people, but 
you have to have spiritual connection to walk in this world. And I don't know how else to say it, folks, to walk in this world and maintain a sane mind. Because I'm going to tell you, they some, they some, <laughs> in these days, times, there are some people in the world that you run in contact, that, that you come in contact with that will make you question why, why I got cut off. And let me just get on a rant just for a minute. I'm over my time. That's my challenge. Do what I want to. Uh, I got into, uh, I was late last time I was at Walmart. I got cut off by a fella and then her kid just looked out the window and started laughing at me. Well, last night I was coming out of Walmart and I got cut off. This fella jerked in front of me on the way to Murphy and it had a man probably about 45, 50 years old. And he's got his little yappy shizu on his arm, just a looking at me barking as he cuts me off like he's driving in Talladega. Well, I'm going to tell you, I needed the peace of God because I wanted to tell him what he could do with that dog, but I, I, I restrained. And that's what I'm talking about, folks. We live in a world where relationships are strained. We live in a world where people ain't got no sense. We have to walk in the goodness and the love, the joy, and the peace of Jesus Christ. And that's something I need to work on. Uh, I'm very even killed. I'm very patient, but I'm going to tell you what I have discovered. And you may have discovered this about your own life, that as I get older and as I get more and see more, my patience gets thinner and thinner and thinner. And I need the grace of the Lord to come and, and surround me so that I can be a shining light in this world and I can impact people for the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, listen, Thank you for joining me. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 10 o'clock, and then we'll have live stream tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. Sorry I went over a little bit. Thank you for your time. God bless you. It's Brother Donnie, Country Homestead Preacher. Tell you I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow. Walking in joy, peace, and love of Jesus Christ. Bye-bye.